Now, before we go any further in this course, we need to learn about setting our datum and how our datums work. So in this lesson, we're going to take a brief look over how the datums work and how we can set it by using G code as well as using the controls of our machine. So we have two different types of datums available to us. We've got our machine datum, which is our home position. And this is the position where the machine likes to go to to do a tool change. And this is the machine zero point. On most machines, it's the tool change position that is the machine zero point, but it's not all machines. So you would have to check that your machine works this way. Now the machine datum we call G53. And in G53 is a container that stores that information. And we can't change that because this position is set in the parameters of the machine. So when we call upon G53, we take it as the machine zero position, the machine home position. Now the other type of datum that we can set is the work shift datum. Now this is the datum that we decide where it goes. We decide the position on the component or floating in air of where we want our zero position to be. And this is a zero position from our programs. So when we say X zero, Y zero within our program, this is the position it will be going to unless we say G53, X zero, Y zero, and then it would go back to the machine datum. So where we decide where our work shift datum is going to go is totally up to us, but it's a zero point of our program. So we have to remember all the program dimensions stem from that datum when we set it. Now there's two general standards on turning of where we put this datum. I always tend to put it at the front of the component. So it's the same as this diagram here. Now the reason I put my datum at the front is because every time I see a Z minus move or position within my program, I know I'm going past that point into the chuck. So I know I'll be cutting material. So just by quickly looking over the program, I can tell whether my tool is in a safe position or not, depending whether the Z is a minus sign or a plus sign for that dimension. And the other datum position that I see a lot of operators use is putting the datum at the back face of the component. Now this is where parting off would go. So if we were parting off here, we would say Z0 to give our correct length of part for our parting off tool. So our Z0 would be at the back of the component and we can set the datum here also. Now we always tend to keep the X datum on the center line. So X0 would always be the center line. So when we set datums, we're often setting the datum along the Z axis, and then we're just typing zero, zero into the X axis to put that datum on the center line of the component. And the position of Z on these datums is the distance from the machine datum to our new work shift datum. So if the tool is parked up in its tool change position, we would accept that as Z zero on most machines. And then the distance from there to the front face of our component, for example, to set that datum would be the distance in Z on that second datum. But we don't tend to type in that information manually. We'd set it using the various different ways. And we're going to discuss those ways in this lesson also. But before I do, I want to talk about the amount of work shift datums available to us. So we have a few, we have G54, G55, G56, G57, G58, and G59. So during a single part, we can use all of these different datum positions and do datum shifts around the component. Now with turning, we don't tend to do that many datum shifts, but we do have a lot of datums available to us if we decide to. And when we're setting our subspindle, I would normally use G54 for our main spindle and G55 for our subspindle. And that's really all the datum shifts I need. Maybe if we're pulling the bar out for an operation during the process, I might add another datum. So if we're turning the front of the component and then grabbing the bar and pulling it out to a separate datum, I may use three datums. One for the main spindle, one for the pullout, and then one for the subspindle but we have even more datums available to us just in case we need lots and lots and lots, we can, FANUC gives that to us. So not only do we have all of these datums available, we can also decimalize them. So G54.1, G54.2, G54.3, etc. 
are all extra datums we can add. And this goes right down to G54.9. And we can do the same again for G55, G56, G57, G58, and G59. So now we have 60 datum shifts available to us. Normally a lot more than we would ever need. So how do we set these datums? Now in the machine controls, we can bring our tool over manually to where we want the front face of our component to be. And then we can press Z0.0 and the measure key on our controls. And this would put the datum into G54 if G54 was active. Now each control does handle this slightly differently. So this is something you would need to check through your machine manual to see exactly how it handles this. Now you might want to bring the tool in manually and face off the end of the bar, then not move the tool in Z while you setting the zero point of this datum to make sure it's accurate. But we will be facing off the bar with our programs anyway, so it's less important. Because as soon as we face off on Z0, then that face is our Z0 position and all the dimensions running from that will be accurate. So once we've pushed the measure key with the tool on our front face where we wish our datum to be, we would just recall that in the program by adding G54 to the safety line or whichever datum we are using. So if we're using G55, we would pop that in there. So once the machine reached G54, it shifts our zero point to our datum position that we've set. So from now on, we would be using our working datum, which we've set at the front of the component here with X0, Z0. But if we are running the same job often, or maybe we're using a fixture and we want that Z position to be in the same place every time we run this job, we can do it with G-code. We can program that position on our machine so the program calls it up every time. And that's the main point of this lesson. That's what I wanna look at. So let's look how we set datums using G10. So this is what the G10 line of code looks like. And this appears at the very top of our program. Now that's under the header where we have our operator's notes and before we start any machining. Now this is because setting the datum is important, otherwise the machine doesn't know where it's going. So using the G10 line, we set the datum by using the program from the distance from the machine datum to our work shift datum. So the first code we see on this line here on this block is G10 and G10 tells the machine that we are setting the work shift value. This is our working datum, our G54, our G55, etc. Now L2 tells the G10 that we are setting the standard work offsets. Now we would always use L2 here. This doesn't change when we're setting the datum using G10. Now the P value here, now this decides which datum we are putting our information. So P1 would be G54, P2, G55, etc., all the way down to P6, which is G59. So here, if we were set in G54, for example, our P would equal one. So we'd have G10, L2, P1 so far. And then we give the exact position of that datum from the machine datum. So our X, Y, and Z coordinates would be the distance from our G53 to the G54 working datum. Now I've added Y here, just in case we're using a Y axis. But normally our X position would be the center line of the component. Now this dimension won't be zero in this case because it's the distance from the machine datum to the working datum. If we have a Y axis on our lathe, this would be that position and Z is the position along the Z axis from the machine datum. So to clarify, the positions we put in G10 is the distance from the machine datum, our G53, to our work shift datum, the zero position, that's all the dimensions we'll run from when we write our program. L2 tells the machine that we're setting the standard work shift datum. P1 is which G code that we are storing our datum information in. So P1 would be G54, P2, G55, etc. Then finally, our X, Y, and Z positions, and this is the distance from the machine datum, our G53, to our new datum that we are setting on the parts of the component. And this line of code would be the first line of code in our G-code program 
right underneath the header. Once we have set all the operator's notes and we start to run the actual program that the machine will read.